Good morning, everyone. Would like to uh, first of all express on, on behalf of my wife and I and the family of Calvary Baptist Church, like to express our condolences to the family of uh, Brother Robert Joseph Daigle, as we've gathered here this evening, this morning, to uh, remember his life, to celebrate a life that uh, the Lord has allowed him to, uh, to live on the earth for, I should say, a brief time, but as a, as a, he has accomplished a lot in that brief time. So we'd just like to greet you. Again, those of you who are joining us by live stream, we thank you for being here and uh, we'd like to move right along with our program. We thank you for the opportunity that uh, the Lord has, thank the Lord for the opportunity has given to us to celebrate today uh, the life of uh, Brother Robert Daigle, uh, a great man that has touched many, 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 many lives. And a uh, matter of fact, just about maybe two years ago, he touched my life as I introduced my son to his school. And um, I know many of you here would have, you know, in some shape or, 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 or the other, some form or the other, been touched by uh, this gentleman. And of course, the family, we would really like to encourage you today. I do know that, um, you know, things like that, uh, live, you know, services like this are always very, very difficult sometimes as remember, reflect on the life of the person, reflect on how they have touched us and uh, how they have influenced even what we are, what we are today. So I want to thank you for being here today and I appreciate the opportunity and the honor that the family has given me to participate in this and to officiate in this service this morning. We'd like to go right along. We'll open up a word of prayer and uh, we'll follow as you would notice in your, in your program. At the first page, there is a, just a brief uh, order of service there and we will do that just as listed. Um, we appreciate all those of you who are with us this morning. Let us bow for prayer, uh, knowing that only God can give strength. He is the one the Bible says the Lord gave and the Lord uh, you know, had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's what Job said when Job lost his 10 children. Can you imagine that? One time, one man lost 10 children altogether at the same time. And he sat down and, and uh, didn't complain, didn't, uh, didn't, didn't uh, charge God foolishly, as the Bible says. But he prayed, he worshiped, and he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked I shall return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is good, and he knows exactly what he's doing. Let's bow for prayer this time. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for the opportunity you have given to us today to celebrate the life of uh, Brother Bob Daigle. Thank you, dear God, that in his life, before he left us, he had placed his faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are comforted by the fact, as your word tells us, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. And we give you glory to God that we one day will see him again, a whole and well and living eternally in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the family members who have gathered here and friends and all those who are joining us today by live stream. Lord, I pray that you touch the life of each one uh, represented here and all family members who are away and friends who are away and couldn't be here. I pray you would comfort them. May the spirit of the living God remind them that you are in control. And no matter what happens in our lives, you remain the same. You said in your word, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we give you thanks for your grace and your strength. I pray now that God, you'd comfort the family and guide us in this meeting today. May all things be done for your glory. May Christ be seen and the comfort that he has brought to uh, Brother Bob in the latter uh, days of his life, that God, many here would experience that comfort through the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much again. As your word tells us, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he that liveth and believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And so, Lord, we just, uh, we just trust the family to thee now, and we, to, we, uh, we believe, dear God, that you're able to sustain and meet the needs. For we, we, we commit this service to you now, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 We do have a tribute in song right now, uh, Amazing Grace. We 
we singing this thing, we just stand together to sing this one. Are we singing this right now? We just all sing it together. Huh? Trying to get the music in. We can join along and sing. Words are here. My feet really how precious be that grace the uh, I first believe my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's a particular passage of scripture that um, has become Bob's favorite in the last few weeks or, year, or maybe months of his life. And, you know, some people may be wondering, you know, I, I know this gentleman for many years. I, I've seen his journey through life. But I remember when Bob called me or contacted me, he said, Pastor Jeremiah, I, I, I would love to be baptized. I want to be baptized. I said, but Bob, uh, why do you want to be baptized? Because uh, we believe the scriptures teach that uh, those who are saved ought to be baptized as a testament or testimony of their faith in Jesus Christ. 
And um, as I listened to him and I visited his home and we talked, spent about an hour sharing his testimony with me, I was convinced indeed that Bob had met the Lord. Uh, his testimony confirmed that, that the Lord Jesus Christ had changed his life. And his concern was, he said, Pastor, I would like everybody, I would like as many of my family members as possible to know this God that I came to know in a real personal way. And uh, he was not fearing death. He was not fearing leaving this life. Uh, he was confident. He was confident that when he left here, he would see his Savior. And his testimony was this. I, 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 I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And, um, and uh, as we arranged it a few days afterwards, uh, uh, I think a couple of weeks afterwards, uh, he followed the Lord in baptism. And he said, I wanted all my friends to see. I wanted them to see that I am not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ because he has literally changed my life. It's something on the inside. And I could testify to that, my friend, because the Bible teaches us, irrespective of people's, maybe their religious views or whatever, there is this absolute personal relationship with Jesus Christ that an individual can actually have and, and they can know it because the scripture teaches us that, that Jesus loves us. And the reason why he came was to deliver us from an eternal punishment. And once a person comes to know the savior, there is the peace of God that comes into the heart and they can testify of that. And this particular scripture, it says in Psalm 25 and verse number four and five, I'm going to read both verses and make a couple of comments. That won't be very long. But I, I just want to, uh, I want to say that, you know, when I hear a testimony like that, it blesses my heart and it confirms what the scripture teaches, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And the Bible tells us in verse 4 of chapter 25 in Psalms, it says, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Thou art the God of my salvation. And then in verse 4 it says, O Lord, teach me thy paths. And um, for a verse like this to become Bob's favorite means that this gentleman had come to understand that there are two ways in life. There, there's the way the Bible calls it, the way of the ungodly, or the broad way that leads to destruction. And then there's a narrow way that leads to life, the way of God. It's narrow in the sense that it's restricted, in the sense that not restricted from people getting on the way, but restricted in terms of the options. There is only one option in that way, and his name is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. And so that narrow, exclusive way, Bob found. He found that there is one way to life. As Jesus said, he that hath the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God hath not life. And he came to understand that all men are sinners. He came to understand that all men are born on a way that leads to destruction. He came to understand that that way that he was going on, would not have led him into the presence of God. And so, as the Bible says, all of us are sinners. In, in Romans chapter number 3 and verse, 20, uh, verse 23, it says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Bob found out that, you know what? I'm a sinner. And um, if I keep on that pathway, then um, I would not find myself in the presence of my maker. And so he learned. There is another way the Bible tells us. It tells us in the same scripture, it tells us that God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. And when Christ died on that cross, my friend, he gave his life so that you and I could come to know the wonderful truth of salvation in him. And when Bob found that way, he was rejoicing in that way, and he had such confidence. I was amazed because I remember him when we were, you know, I took my son over there, and we would meet with a great guy, a very, very friendly guy, and um, we had a cordial relationship in terms of 
him helping my son to learn 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 karate, and um, it was just amazing. And uh, we 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 just kind of knew each other. And then uh, no, when I saw him afterwards, after he was he got sick and he came back here, and I met him, and his voice, his testimony, his concern, his passion was he says I don't understand how come I didn't get to know this way earlier. Um, but he was able to testify that there was absolute peace in his life. And my friend, the Bible tells me this, that when Jesus Christ comes into a man's life, he changes that man's life and he gives that man or that woman peace on the inside, knowing that they have a wonderful gift called eternal life. And when most people in the Cayman Islands and probably around the world know that, that Bible verse, it says, for God so loved the world, that's Bob Daigle, that's you and me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave his best, my friend, Jesus Christ. He gave. Then he says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And when Bob confessed to me and he confessed to others, I know that he had trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. He could say, like the psalmist says here, teach me thy paths. Now he's on the way of heaven. He wanted to know exactly how God wanted him to walk on that path. And um, I want to let you know, my friend, those of you who listen to my voice here today or around this world, there is an exclusive way that leads to life. And his name is Jesus. You say, Pastor, I don't really believe in all that religious stuff. Well, it's not about religion. It's about a path that the Lord Jesus Christ desires to get us on. And when Bob found out that he was a sinner, and when Bob found out that Jesus loved him and would accept him regardless when he trusted Jesus Christ, that little word believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, as the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simple, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Bob was able to testify, I have believed, not in my head, but I have believed in my heart. I have transferred that knowledge in my head to my heart and my faith was expressed in the one and only way whose name is Jesus. And once that happened, that very instant, that very instant, the God of heaven comes to dwell inside of that, that brother, comes to dwell inside that man's heart and gives him eternal life. And he can say, you know what? I want to follow the Lord. I want to be baptized. I want to serve God. Knowing that baptism is not what saved him, but he was able to testify to the world that, hey, at some point in the past, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I chose that way. And my friend, God, God wants us to remember this. That once a person who has been saved dies, they're not really dead. I mean, they're, the Bible tells me we are absent from the body. We are present with the Lord. So the very instant that Bob left his body and his spirit left his body, he entered into the presence of God Almighty. He was able now to have his right now currently, according to the text of the scripture, experiencing the joy of heaven, the glory of heaven. Um, and we want him here. We'd love to have him here. We'd love to have him talk to us and chat with us. And family members would love to have him around them. Wonderful. We all miss our loved ones. We grieve, the Bible tells us. But we don't grieve as those who don't have any hope. So one day, one day, praise the Lord, all those who know Jesus Christ as the Savior, all those who have chosen that path, that way, whose name is Jesus Christ, who is the God. The Bible tells me, the psalmist says here, thou art the God of my salvation. Thou art the God who saves me. Upon thee, I will wait all the day. One day, there'll be a great reunion and all those who have chosen that way, that path, including Bob, would be, we'd be united in one glorious place and they will, they will know each other. They'll experience the joys of heaven for all eternity and the bible tells us here that we can be comforted in that fact that he's removed from his pain he's removed from his troubles he's removed from the trials of this earth he's removed from the suffering he's moved from the weakness and the brokenness of the physical frame and he's now awaiting his glorified body the bible tells me that one day god's going to give us when he comes back a glorified body that will feel no more pain that will never be able to die there wouldn't have an absolutely no suffering as we read in the book of Revelation. There'll be no more death, no more sin, no more pain, no more suffering, but we will enjoy the very presence of God forever in a body, my friend, that God's going to give us that will never grow old, never grow tired, never grow sick, 
never have cancer, never have any disease. It is a body that was prepared by the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful truth. What a comfort to know that, hey, Bob, I know we're, we miss you here. We miss you here. But those of us who have chosen the way of the Lord Jesus Christ will see him there. I want to leave that with the family. Remember this, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Jesus said to Mary and Martha, as they stood by the graveside of their brother Lazarus, Jesus said, your brother, your brother shall rise again. And they said, yes, we know he's going to rise again in the resurrection. And Jesus said to them, I am the resurrection and the life. He that, he that is dead, though he's dead, he shall live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Jesus Christ would one day raise every person that's dead from the grave and they will be united with him if they have chosen that path during this life they would open their eyes in the presence of God and our desire is that Bob's testimony would speak to many and let them know that God is real his son is real his way is real his life is real and he loves to give anybody who will accept him that wonderful life called eternal life, an absolute gift of God. May God help you and help us to look to the way of the Lord. Oh, Lord, teach me thy path. Thank God, Bob Daigle found that path. And that path gave him peace in the midst of his storm and even up to the very last day of his life. I remember the last time I visited him at the hospital and uh, he was growing weaker and weaker, but um, the, you could tell in his eyes, the confidence, there's nothing that can surpass or supplant that confidence, that knowing whether I live or die, I'm the Lord's. And it comes by simply knowing in a personal way, the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you so much, oh God. I ask you now, God, to help as we continue this service. Be with those who are coming on next. And again, I pray for the family. I pray that men would seek Christ the only way. The only one who gave Bob this peace and this confidence and this assurance. Because he trusted you, he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and called upon you. And the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Bless the family today. And may his, firm, his family and friends out there remember this. There is a way, and that way is Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We now have some family tributes. Good morning, everyone. Just been asked to um, read the tributes from Bob's family and friends. Uh, the first one. You had an incredible way of viewing life, especially when times became difficult. Watching over you these past 10 months showed me so much. Your strength and your focus to keep moving. <clears throat> focus to keep, to keep fighting no matter how challenging things got. You always stayed positive. When things got tough for me, you always had a way to help me resolve my problems. We didn't always see eye to eye on everything, but you did what you did best and stayed patient with me and helped me see the other side of things. After work, you would be exhausted, but you would still call to grab food or a drink and ask how I'm doing and, and what's new. I was so happy to tell you about my acceptance to become a firefighter. You said that you were so proud and you told me to keep moving forward no matter what, no matter how bad things get, and that we are Daigles and we never give up. 
I will always miss our wing nights at Salty's and the laughs we had. I could never ask for a better father and you will forever be missed. I will cherish unforgettable moments we shared. I love you, dad. Rest in peace, Bobby. Next, I have a tribute from Bob's son, Alex. There's a special bond between fathers and sons. The bond builds over time and the experiences that we share together. Dad was a superhero to me, a fitness guru, and taught me that taught me the values of taking care of your body, that your body is a vessel and that you should take care of your vessel while you're on this planet. He had this way about him, this energy that just motivated you to accomplish your goals. He was truly an anomaly. My father loved the beach. He took my brother, my sisters and I to the beach every chance he got. I always turned out to be a great, it always turned out to be a great day with my dad. It was a special place for him to bond with us. One of my greatest memories with dad is when I was about eight years old, dad took my brother and I to the Kaibo beach. As we were walking along the beach, I said, dad, let's race. He said, all right, let's do it. We all lined up. We took off running. I thought I was winning, but little did I know he was just matching my speed. And when all of a sudden he took off running, let me tell you something. The way this man looked when he sprinted was like watching a superhero run, such power and control. I had the biggest smile on my face. I'm beyond proud of the life of my, my father created for himself and his kids. There are people who live twice as long as he did and don't accomplish what, accomplish what he was able to in his lifetime. He was truly an anomaly and I'll forever be grateful for him. Energy never dies, it just takes a different form. And whatever form that is, I'll see you when I get there. Love you, dad, rest in peace, rest in power, Alex. This one is from his daughters, Danae and Shanae. Dad, we will always cherish the times you spent together. You were a born fighter, independent and strong, but on December 2nd, all that came to an end. The biggest fight of your life began on December 13th. It was hard to see you trying to fight for 10 months. On October 7th, you lost that fight. May your soul rest in peace. You will always be remembered as a world champion and your grandkids will know how great you were. Love, Danae and Shanae. Okay, up next, I have a tribute from Bob's mom, Miss Beverly Daigle. Most people know Bob as a tough, strong man who could clear a room of bad guys. There's no doubt it's true, but Bob had another side, which some might consider a mama's boy. As a young child, Bob strived to keep things together by becoming the man of the house. With six siblings and me working two jobs, it was nearly impossible to, pro to provide for all of our needs. Three years, of, three years of very tough times and emotional turmoil for each of us, our family was finally able to move forward in a house of our own. Bob studied in and after school. He trained in different sports, worked hard, pursued each of his personal goals at the same time. Helped keep his siblings on track as well. He was my right-hand man. Bob had a drive and desire to excel in everything he set his mind to. I had little advice for him along the way. Bob created his own path. He surrounded himself with exceptional people and friends who became part of our family. Bob would check in on me often and help in every way possible. He would insist on me coming to visit him and put me up in the best places in Cayman. Nothing was too good for his mother, he would joke. Many friends and students over the years say they were drawn to Bob's personality. But after knowing them and his children, Bob was a better person because of them. Bob had taught me as much about life than I could ever have taught him. Being there, watching him reach his goals and inspire the people around him helped fulfill my life. It's every parent's wish that their children do better. And Bob did that. 
I could not be proud of the man he became. In the end, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your years. Rest in peace, my beloved son. Thank you for being part of our lives. Ma. This next one is from John, uh, Bob's brother, John. Watching Bob grow up as a sibling holds many cherished memories. In the absence of a father figure, Bob instinctively took over the role of organizer, disciplinarian, and family protector. Bob wasn't naturally great at everything he pursued, but his drive to continually learn and practice pushed him consistently to the top. From gymnastics in high school to bodybuilding, arm wrestling, and ultimately martial arts, where he found his natural calling. Even at the earliest age, Bob had a knack to point out our strengths and weaknesses and inspired each one of us to reach our personal goals. As time passed and we lived apart, I realized how much of an influence Bob had been. When he visited and I expressed any doubt, he would charge me right back up again. He was such an inspirational force which they'll be missed dearly. For those of us who are lucky enough to be influenced by him, the best tribute to Bob's memory and to our family is to continue to believe in ourselves as much as he did in each one of us. John. Uh, from Bob's sister, Carol. As kids, we called him Bobby. We lived together, we fought, we laughed, we cried. We shared our dreams, plans, and secrets. Bob was competitive since birth. Being his older si sister by two years, he always wanted to be faster and stronger than me. I would run as quickly as, as, sorry, he would run as quickly as he could to outpace his big sister. It didn't take him very long to catch up and then surpass me, never looking back. All the memories we shared is what bonds me to him now. He is my brother, not by choice, but by the nature of our birth. And I could not have chosen a better one. I will miss Bobby more than words can say. We should all be thankful for knowing him and for this time on this earth. I hope that everyone remembers how wonderful a person he was, that he lived a beautiful, impactful life. He was loved by many and will be deeply missed by all. Now our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same, but when our time on earth is done, and we are all called one by one, we will all meet on that beautiful shore and the chain shall link again. Forever, Carol. <clears throat> From Bob's sister, Patty. I remember I was around seven years old. Bob taught me how to tell time. He was a very patient teacher. I learned many things over the years from him. He was always teaching my son some kind of new self-defense move. I was always impressed with how he would figure out how to teach someone so they would best understand the lesson. Bob always thought about others and how to help them, always putting family first. I recall he invited me to, vi to visit him on the island. He knew I was nervous about flying, so he flew up just to fly down with me. I, it meant the world to know how much and how far he would go for me. Bob would, do, Bob would do his best to see everyone when he came up to visit. He would love to make surprise entrances. He would just pop out of nowhere and have a big hug for me. I miss our talks and I miss your smile. I am lucky to have such an amazing man as my big brother, Patty. This last one is from Bob's friend, Guy Coco. <clears throat> I will always be grateful to have been a lifelong friend to Bob. The timing was perfect as juniors in high school, when the bleachers of the gymnasium, Bob approached me and started a conversation about weightlifting. He recalled that before we officially met, we were paired up to wrestle in the gym class and I stood out as a strong opponent. I always valued that. Bob had a unique approach to working out as he would perform an old style one-handed shoulder press on the school's universal weight stack, pressing the full stack and impressing everyone. He also built his own home gym equipment in the school shop class from photos he saw in a magazine. I was invited to work out in that crude but effective 
equipment in his mother's basement. Bob was always adventurous, and when life presented the possibility of living in the Caribbean, it was an easy decision. With marriage and his karate studio, came out of Karate Academy, Bob was very busy. When I visited, we would often wake up early and jog several laps around Ocean Club's parking lot to start the day on a high note. I am glad to have been there when his dream of building a health club became a reality. I later spent five years enjoying the island, managing New Image Health Club, while also enjoying time with Bob and his family. That will always remain a special time for me. Bob inspired those who, whose lives he touched. Sorry, Bob inspired those whose lives touched his life. He was a free thinker and always pushed ahead, having amazing resilience and rarely, if ever, looking back. He had an amazing will to succeed and inspired others to do the same. He was his true self through good and difficult times, and that's a testament to his spirit. Bob loved excitement and was always ready for what's next. He sought out the special moments and the, and the thrill of life. More recently, he had seen Europe and through karate, many countries in Central America and the Caribbean. He expressed a desire to see Asia. He would want us to make most of every opportunity life offers. I'll be forever grateful to have had Bob in my life as my lifelong friend and teacher, Guy. Uh, I'd just like to uh, say a few words, um, if I could. Uh, Bob was a, a teacher, uh, my Mr. Miyagi, I guess you could say, um, a mentor, a role model, and uh, more importantly, a true friend. I spent a lot of time with Bob. Um, in fact, I pretty much spent all of my teenage years at Cayman Karate Academy, training and traveling with him to all the tournaments all over the world. Um, those were for sure some of my, you know, best moments of my life. Um, he was like family. I think I may have spent more time with Bob um, than I do with my actual family during those years, just like five, six days a week at the school. And just, you know, he, it was just, it was amazing. It was, it was an awesome time. Um, looking back at that now, I, I really, uh, I really feel blessed to have had that time with him. I also got to spend a lot of time with him um, the months prior to his passing. Um, and it was incredible to see the willpower, his willpower kick in and, and go to work. I mean, I'd visit him and he'd always tell me, you know, I, I did X amount of push-ups today. I was able to do so many laps around my house. I ate so much because I'm trying to put on this weight. And, you know, it, the fight was real and he was definitely up for the challenge. You know, that's, that's just how he was. Um, I visited him at the hospital one day and we weighed him. He wanted to see how much he weighed and he, he was hoping he put on 10 pounds and he had put on seven and he was a little disappointed, but you know, he, he looked at me and you all, anyone that knows Bob knows he has this, um, this kind of side smile that he does. He kind of like side, like you go like that and like a Robert De Niro kind of thing, you know? And he's like, you know what this means? And I was like, well, he's like, I just need to eat a lot more. And that, it's just like, he just said that. And it was like, he was always, able to to see the positive side of things and, and no matter what I know it was just just how he was um that was just another tribute to his, his his what was just so great about him I think he felt like if he stayed strong and if he kept the weight on this thing couldn't catch him and either way you you could tell that he had a plan of attack and he was sticking to it that was just Bob in a nutshell you know here's a problem and, and here's my solution that's just just how he was you know um so um, and I was also with him another day and he was talking about what happens when he leaves us. And, um, I, I said to him, I said, Bob, I don't really want to think about you dying. I don't want to talk about you dying. And he's like, Hey, you know, it's, it's just a part of life. You know, we all have to go through this. Um, you know, it's, I, I just have to put the emotional part of this to the side and, um, you know, try to get my affairs straight, make sure my family is taken care of, make sure everybody's good and that, you know, everything is, is set when I go. And um, that to me was showing, you know, his, his true courage, his bravery and his strength that like even sitting there facing, facing death, he was still able to stay focused and, and make the best of the time he had left. I mean, he might've been, he might not have been um, 
scared, but he didn't seem scared at all. Um, he was, you know, he was brave as, as can be. Um, I was just in awe of his bravery during that time. And it was pretty amazing to witness just just to witness actually just just everything that he was doing and and his real testament to his willpower and what he stood for um if you all had that kind of willpower and that kind of determination that kind of drive we'd for sure all be superheroes just just like the amazing superhero bob was to to many of us you know and rest in peace my friends and until we meet again Thank you very much. Um, appreciate all of the tributes. And as you know, the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die, after this, the judgment. So we all have an appointment with death at some point. And it's an appointment we cannot postpone or neither could we uh, change the time. God has a, partic a particular timing. And that's an uh, inescapable law it's written in scripture. It's appointed unto men once to die after this judgment so there is an after death for sure as god confirms but the thing is as i said a while ago the path that you choose you choose christ then the confirmation of um, what will happen after death is settled you meet the lord as you know we'll not be having a funeral service in terms of uh, a graveside a ceremony or anything like this but um before i close this off i'll just like to to what we normally do at what we call a committal service. As you know, um, we, there's been no uh, viewing or anything like that, but as the family has chosen, but normally at the end of a funeral service or memorial service, we'd like to quote this scripture. It says in verse in uh, first Corinthians, actually, actually I'm gonna read a little bit from Psalm 46. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? One thing have I desired, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Some of us have shared through these passing years a wonderful companionship and fellowship with our beloved brother. Many blessed and hallowed memories come to us in these moments, which we shall always cherish. His faithfulness, friendliness, consecrated life will continue to radiance um, a testimony to us. And so, as much as it has pleased Almighty God in His great mercy and wisdom to take the soul of our dear brother, Bob Daigle, here departed, we will commit his remains, has to be committed some way on this earth. As the Bible says, dust thou art, to dust shall thou return. His body shall return to the earth or remain on the earth. Dust to dust or ashes to ashes. In certain hope of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, the resurrection of eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change, the Bible says, change our corruptible bodies made like unto his incorruptible body. First Corinthians chapter 15. By his almighty power, whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. And so at this point, um, whatever will take place following this ceremony, would like to say that uh, the Lord has taken our dear brother and uh, his body of ashes will be committed to this earth, remain on this earth. But his soul has already been departed and has been taken to the presence of the Lord. So may the Lord help us. May the Lord bless and guide us as we continue here. Thank you again for showing up. We want to have a, a closing word of prayer. I'm not sure if there's anybody else that has anything else to say, but I appreciate all those who gave a comment and a tribute. And we would have a closing video um, that will be shared uh, with us here. I presume it will also be seen on live stream. But we'll have an official word of benediction. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we thank you so much for your blessings upon us. Thank you for the opportunity today to uh, remember Bob um, and to celebrate his life and to celebrate the way he's touched many lives and particularly to celebrate his faith in Christ and the confirmation he gave before he left his life 
of his choice of that path whose name is Jesus Christ. I pray comfort the family at this hour and bless as we proceed with the uh, closing part of this ceremony. I pray again that you'd meet needs in lives today and as we mourn his loss and deal with the uh, Lord, the repercussions of mourning throughout the next weeks, maybe months, probably even years, that you would meet needs in the life of each member of the family and friends around this world. Continue to guide us and help us to look to Christ, who alone can provide comfort, as your word tells us. You comfort us with the comfort of the Holy Spirit so that we can comfort others. So I pray your comfort upon the family, your strength, your wisdom, your grace, as we commit them to you now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you very much.
Thank you.